Shall we take our seats and begin? Here we go. Wow. At last. This should be a lot of fun. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for coming. Before we even begin, I, I want to express my uh, gratitude and amazement. I am humbled that you folks would have traveled the distance that some of you traveled. Australia, England, Switzerland, that is unbelievably flattering to me, and, and Istanbul. And my job today and tomorrow will be to do the absolutely the best job I can to communicate to you folks how to enter the corporate speaking market. And, uh, you know, I've given it quite a bit of thought. If I had to describe in words exactly what I think this program ultimately will accomplish, uh, I think the bottom line is I will cut five years of pain and misery off your life if you decide to enter the corporate market. I had for so long made so many mistakes and done it in such an unusual, different, backwards way. I kind of one by one learned that this doesn't work. That took me three years. This is definitely not the way to do it. I learned that in the fifth year. You know. So what I hope to do, I think the biggest accomplishment at the end of this program, if, if I do my job, will be to have shown you systematically that if you're going to enter the market, this is a pathway that works, that will produce definable, measurable results in a you know, delineable time period and cut out a whole lot of misery. And then in between, of course, obviously, I have a lot of information to disseminate to you about how to do the talk and you know, general content and ideas, et cetera. So there's a lot of information, but I think if you strip all down what the real end result of this program uh, tends to be is that you can enter the market not making a lot of the mistakes that most people will make when they try to. So that, that particularly is the way I look at it. Before we begin, I want to familiarize you with the materials that you should have before you. You all should have in front of you a workbook. And we will be working with that throughout the program. Uh, the first part of the workbook, of course, is what's going to be coming up on these slides, what I will be going through. And the program is uh, broken into two very distinct parts. Uh, day number one, which is today, is going to be all about how to put your corporate presentation together, how to develop a brand, how to get content, how to put it together in a way that corporations are going to look at it as value. Um, and then how to slide in to a corporate demonstration of hypnosis and how to do everything in your hypnosis demonstration to relate back to your original core message and your brand, uh, something that a corporate uh, meeting planner would look at and say, yes, this is something we want to have at our conference and that would add value to our conventioneers. So day number one is going to be how to actually construct and put together a corporate presentation. Day number two, which is tomorrow, is going to be, okay, now you've got a corporate presentation. Now that you know what it is you're going to say and you've got it perfected, you're ready to go out there and offer this to the corporate market, how do you sell it? How do you market it? How do you get through to these people that are responsible for scheduling speakers? Uh, how do you target a market and go after it? How do you get speaker bureaus to book you? How do you put together your demo video? How do you put together your website? What are the elements of a successful program along those lines? Pretty much uh, social marketing, we're gonna cover as many areas as I am familiar with, with how to actually go out now and get yourself booked as a speaker. And um, I will no doubt continually refer back to my own personal experience, being as how it is the only experience that I have, but I did find that when I was originally invited into the corporate market, I, I was told that I was a $5,000 a speech speaker. And uh, which I literally argued with the guy saying I thought that was too much and uh, he corrected me. Uh, in terms of uh, corporate marketing, strangely enough, $5,000 per speech is the floor. That's the entry level number. And most people, uh, first of all, are surprised by that number and they will say, well, why so much? Well, because the speaker bureaus act kind of as a watchdog in this ind industry. Uh, they don't collude and there's no you know, kind of uh, interference, but a speaker bureau is collecting a commission, typically 20 to 25%. And from their point of view, it, it is really simple. If I have two speakers of identical ability, I mean, Matt gives a great presentation, Noor gives a fantastic presentation, they're both good. But Noor says she is a $3,000 speaker, and Matt says he is a $5,000 speaker. And I know that both the client will be satisfied with either of them, and I'm collecting 20 or 25% commission. What's my impulse, naturally? You know, I will tend, and it sounds nuts, but you'll find that as you raise your price, some people actually get more bookings. They get more popular. And it's one of the things you're going to want to ultimately do is keep pushing the price. And speaker bureaus are out there pushing the price. Uh, as I said, when I first started 
in the corporate market was 5,000. They rapidly moved me up to 6,500. Then it was 75. Then it was 10. I plateaued at 10. I know people now, I, I've been retired from the market for a number of years. I know people now that routinely, 12, 12, 5, 13, they're pushing 15 now as a mid-level speaker. And that's the bureaus always trying to get it higher and higher, again, because they're collecting a commission. They're, they're out there working for you. So if you were to say that I want to get a lot of bookings because I'm just new in the business and I want to get very, very busy and I know that everybody else is charging five so I'm going to charge three because people will hire me because I'm only three, it will often have exactly the opposite effect. You'll get fewer bookings than you would have. It's nuts. It's all perception. It's all hypnosis. You'll see that everything we do is hypnosis. So uh, we will obviously be talking about that. So you should have the work week before you. Obvi and again, I was going to give these to you because I've got two different types of uh, DVDs. This is a binder I'm going to give each of you, and in it, it has four DVDs and a CD. There, there are four different corporate presentations that I did that are completely uncut, and I did this for a reason. There is a presentation in here that I gave to Pitney Bowes, a presentation I gave to a mortgage company called Greenpoint Mortgage, a presentation here I gave to a group of meeting, uh, excuse me, financial planners that was called Peak Performance, and I think the fourth is Prudential, I forget, but there are four different uh, presentations uncut because I want you to see from, you know, here's Anthony to the very end, uh, completely uncut presentations, but more importantly, I wanted you to notice that when you look at these presentations, if you, if you actually observe them, your first impression is this guy's given four totally different talks because when I'm talking to the mortgage company, I'm talking to them about mortgages and interest rates and uh, how, what they're doing in terms of getting listings, etc. all of their terminologies. Uh, you'll see, I'll show you a little clip of it later. Uh, if I'm talking to the Pitney Bowes group, they have all their corporate lingo. I forget, I honestly forget what it is, but these FSO3s and stuff like that. And I'm talking to them as if I'm using their terminologies. And you would, your first impression when you see these is that there are four you know, different talks because they sound different. But then if you take away all the terminology, if you strip away all of the specific examples that I was using, what you see is that I'm pretty much saying the same thing in each presentation. What I did was I took some time to custom design it for that particular group. I memorized a few terms, you know, asked around about what's going on within that group and, and custom designed it. And you'll see when you observe four of them in a row that it really does make it sound different. It really gives it a totally different impact. So uh, the second part of today's program is gonna be what we call the needs analysis. How do you do that? How do you take a few minutes in advance and gather the information that you need to custom design each presentation? So that's, what the, that's why I gave you four DVDs. Uh, also, it's loaded with different examples. I'm always, I was always adding stuff to my talk and you know, changing things around. Any information you get from any of my DVDs, uh, I'm giving you a copy of my book, uh, some of my tapes that I used to sell, any examples, any metaphors, any um, information at all, please feel free to use it in any capacity you wish. If you wish to go out and mouth word for word what I did, I wouldn't recommend it, you know, but, but chances are, you know, I mean, uh, no one will have heard it before and they'll think that it was your idea and that's fine with me. Uh, you'll probably the smarter way is to get the idea and make it your own, you know, modify it a little bit. But if you hear anything in any of the information that I've given you that you think it would be useful in your presentation, you absolutely have my permission and encouragement to use it. So that's what the four DVDs is, uh, it are. Uh, the CD that is in here, I had three sets of tapes that I used to sell as product, uh, tapes and CDs. And the third set was a series of six live presentations. Uh, they were done primarily to financial services groups, but in one of them was a live presentation about uh, goal setting by getting your goals on a CD or tape. Another one was a live presentation about how to use visualization. Another was a third technique I did, which was called a kinesthetic approach. So there are six live presentations, each one covering a different topic. And again, I gave it to you hoping that you would uh, hear enough examples and maybe get some ideas that, oh, I could use that in my presentation or I can take that modify it a bit and it would, be, it would fit right into my brand. Uh, one of my goals today is to give you as much information as I possibly can. And the reason I didn't put them on your desk is that there are two different uh, formats. I was told before I came over here that there is often a European DVD format known as PAL, P-A-L, and that over in the United States there's NTSC. And sometimes if you give a person an NTSC DVD it does not play on the machine. So I have both. And if you tell me uh, which format you would prefer, uh, you'll see if there's no mark at the bottom 
bottom, these will be NTSC, and if it's got the red PAL at the bottom, PAL format, these would be, have, have been encoded as PAL DVDs at the very bottom here. So who needs PAL? There you are. And PAL? You have PAL? NTSC, so I, I have fewer PAL than NTSC, but that, that's NTSC. Did you need PAL? Nothing NTSC is fine. NTSC. You know, in the old days, you had to have one or the other, and nowadays things have, have changed a bit. Um, and who, well, I'll give you one of each, PAL and one that's not. There you go. And NTS, NTSC, there you go. Excellent. So that's why I, I, they weren't sitting on your desk when you came. One final note before we move on. You will notice uh, it is not branded yet. They are on their way, but it is a, a flash drive. Uh, this is an 8 gigabyte flash drive. And so I sat down one day and got simply as much information as I possibly could on it before it stopped taking information. And it, uh, you've got about six and a half gigs of information on each of these flash drives. And if you give me just a moment, I will go through what this information is. Again, one, one of my goals being to give you as much information as is possible. 